Hello and welcome to another episode of Sports and Songs Podcast. This is Season 5, Episode number 33. Tonight's the Songs Edition, Andy. How are you? I'm good. Yourself? Good. It's June 20th, 2024. We've done 200 album reviews in our five years here uh, doing this. This will be 201. We're doing an album review tonight on Megadeth. 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 Uh, some fans out there, some not so much. Um, and the whole Metallica Megadeth thing yeah. we're going to bring up today, it, it all spawned. The answers of a lot of the questions came with tonight's album, Dave Mustaine. A lot of stuff we're going to cover on this. Uh, do you have any Megadeth albums or, or CDs? I, I I never had any. I always listened to them every chance I could on the radio. Um, big fan of Megadeth. I like them better than Metallica. I'm one of like 50 people to admit it, but there's millions out there. Um, yes, there there's a lot. Uh, but you're right. They I won't this is what David Stain. I I have so much respect for him as a person. Um he, he's he, he's one of those guys like we're finding out now with a lot of them, a lot more intelligent than he looks. Oh yes. You know, he's the, he's got the whole rock star look going, but when you really listen to what he says. The man's very intelligent. Um, he's had his issues in the past with substance, but, you know, very wise. But time has not done Mr. Mustaine any good. Well, he, he's, he's, never he's, been not aged well. he's never been an attractive man, no. but he still has the long uh, red flowing hair. He's and an sadly, old- it was in the 80s, I think that kind of hurt their popularity, the fact that he wasn't as attractive, which – I'm in the same boat. I feel you, Dave. I get it. You know. Yeah, it's but, uh, it's interesting. But we'll get to on tonight's show. There's we'll get to some of that about uh, him as a person and the uh, intelligence level mm-hmm. and the creativity, the artistic work. Very good, very good stuff. So let's get into it. We've got uh, album review here. Now yeah. this is the debut. This is the debut album for Megadeth, and so. They had issues. The album cover is up on the screen here. This is not what they gave to the record company. This is not what they gave to the record label. The record label just kind of went ahead and kind of made their own. They didn't have, I mean, they they had, well, let's put it this way, uh, released by Combat Records in 1985. So this is how old, uh, Andy, you know, 2025 is next year. It's we're going on 39 years old. And so we're talking about people aging and how old they look. This is back when we were listening to uh, prior to us listening to, to glam um, yep. metal, the stuff that we like. This came out before then even. This is old school. And once again, Dave Mustaine. So Combat Records was the beginning. They gave the band $8,000 to record and produce its debut album. Well, that's not going to get you far. $8,000. The band was forced to fire their original producer and produce the album by themselves after they spent half the album's budget on drugs, alcohol, and food. What? They said, we don't have enough to, to, to pay to write the check for the producer. we got to do this ourselves because there's not much funds left on the 8000 And so once again, this was back. Uh, these guys were not bright individuals uh, back in the day. They were partying, and they had some fun. Now, despite the poor production, the album was a well-received effort that obtained strong reviews in various music publications. Killing is my business and business is good is the name of the album. Played an essential role in establishing thrash metal as an authentic subgenre of heavy metal music. It explores themes of death, occultism, and violence. Now... Killing in my business is business is good. People didn't like it because of the violence. They thought at one point these guys were Satan worshipers. They like to kill. This is all serial killer stuff. And I think the album uh, still relates to the war, the military industrial complex where you, the, uh, if you get into and in, keep getting into wars, uh, the endless wars, like we've seen, it's uh, business is good for the defense companies. I think that's what, the point is they they couldn't yep. admit it back at the time, but it wasn't about them killing anybody. These guys were uh, them personally, but yes, were stoners. Yes, yes. 
Now, the song features a track called Mechanics. You've heard of this one, Andy. Probably yeah. heard of the version in Metallica called The Four Horsemen. One of my favorite songs of the of Metallica is The Four Horsemen. That was their version of this. Megadeth had theirs. They called it Mechanics. It's a, um, a song, the lyrics deal with having sex at a gas station. So this is, this is old I mean, school junior, junior high stuff, but very good. Yes. Yes. But they did a, they did a cover. They did a controversial cover of the 1965 song. These boots were made for walking. Um, and once again, a, a war song and, um, Interesting stuff. So Dave Mustaine had originally been the lead guitarist for Metallica. However, due to drinking, substance abuse, violent behavior, and personality conflicts, he was fired from the band. Two months after being fired from Metallica, Mustaine bet, met da bassist David Ellefson, uh, born and born and uh, raised in Minnesota, southern Minnesota, mm -hmm. and together they formed Megadeth in Los Angeles. So another. You know, we get to all these Minnesota connections. Most of the bands are in L.A. or New York, uh, big cities. Yeah. And you hear of the folks commonly nonstop from Minnesota or their connections to Minnesota. Dave Allison moved to L.A. with found one of the founding members of Megadeth. So he got fired from Metallica, and all that he remembered is that he wanted blood. He was so upset and so angry. So there's a lot of emotion in this album, and... I guess the subsequent ones too, because he had a beef. He had a beef with Metallica. Um, so he says, I know what they're going to do for their next few albums. It's going to be fast. It's going to be speed metal. It's going to be thrash. My only goal is that I want it to be faster and heavier than them. The problem was none of this existed. This was all new. You know, thrash metal was yep. new. <clears throat> and so imagine being the, uh, the guitarist, the bassist, or the drummer and saying, hey, we want to be fast, but we want to be faster than Metallica and heavier. And I'm sure the answer is was uh, I I don't know what what that is or what does that even mean. <laughs> yeah. So they got into doing some very heavy songs, very fast. Uh, they did go through several vocalists, uh, Andy. I, I don't know if you know this. I didn't know this at the time. They mul they interviewed multiple vocalists, but Mustaine decided to handle to handle the vocal duties himself. Also, while serving as the band's primary lyricist main songwriter, and co-lead and rhythm guitarist. So, Andy, if we just do a pause right here, you know how uh, busy you'd be doing one of these things uh, in, in a rock metal, metal band. A lot of guys are the lyricists and other folks write the songs. The songwriters are different people, and they're certainly different guitarists. Uh, Mustaine was doing all this. Still hadn't played up of of then. He still wasn't. I don't think he was even sober at this time, right? He was still partying. Yeah, and, and that was you know, a little unheard of then, uh, where one guy kind of took the whole direction of everything. He had it all under his hat. Um, I know John Bon Jovi was the same way from just seeing that documentary on him. Yeah, Richie Sanborn, him wrote, but it was all under John Bon Jovi's umbrella, his, his thing. A lot of bands kind of got that way. As much as it said, oh, we're a band. We're all here together. We all do the B as in B, S as in S. Um, now, Mustaine wasn't power hungry that way, but he was kind of a, I don't want to say a control freak or a perfectionist because he wasn't, but he had such a beef with against Metallica that if it did or didn't work, it was going to be his fault. He didn't want to have to blame anybody else. He you wanted know, to beat these guys single handedly or they're going to beat me single handedly. I don't want to say me and Dave Ellison beat him. Because if we don't, then I could blame Dave. No, it's all him. That's what his attitude was, my opinion. He took ownership, and then he started doing all this stuff, not because, like you said, he was a power-hungry guy, but if no one else is doing it or no one else is doing it good enough, he was the type to say, look, I'll do it myself. Uh, Mike, uh, Mustaine was not a guy probably with a lot of girlfriends and a lot of friends outside of the band. He was a loner guy, and this was his life. I mean, this is all that he did other than partying and whatnot, but – He's like, you know what? I've never been a vocalist in a heavy metal band. How about I start now? And the other guys looked at him and said, "Well, but but you can't, you know, you can't sing." So, things got interesting. He worked on that. They put this album out. Now I'm going to show the listeners here, people watching. Here's the what the real album was supposed to look like. The now, album I like album. that cover. Yes. 
And so this is the, uh, Mustaine presented a sketch to Combat Records. They went with this, and the band members, especially Mustaine, were mortified. <laughs> Could you imagine sending, uh, here you go, put something like this together, and that's what you get. The font, the font style on that alone, he must have said, yeah. are you kidding me? But by then, they had spent the money. They had to get it out. They had to get it uh, out and released because he was so hell-bent on getting back at these guys. Yeah. So back in 20, 20, uh, 20, was it 2002? 2002, they re-released it, the album remixed it, and had the original cover that was intended to be, which I'll call this the not the alternate, but this is what it should have been, and it would have. Yeah. I think it probably would have sold more. It would have been a, a better looking looking deal yep. than the than the first one now admit it there's been a handful of albums in your life you bought based on the album cover exactly I mean, you know a little of the band or maybe heard a song you're oh i don't know but that cover jumps out and grabs you this would have jumped out and grabbed me by the throat and said dude buy me it, it almost looks like a judas priest and iron maiden you know they didn't have a, a yes. moniker megadeth they didn't have Vic Rattlewood yet. Um, so they do all these songs that are their own, and they throw in a cover song of These Boots Are Made For Walking, uh, originally done by Lee Hazelwood. But they rewrote the lyrics. Lee Hazelwood took offense. Yes. He's like, he's like are you kidding me? This? You know, Were you but thinking of asking me first or asking he, for He took permission? offense after he got a few of the royalty checks first. Yes, and so Mustaine said later, and I read that he said, "Yeah, what, what do you think about you know using his stuff?" He said, "Well, I, I'm find it find it kind of funny that Lee Hazelwood didn't didn't uh, throw us much hate after he, he started. He was receiving the royalty checks to start with, and then he got oh he got mad later. It wasn't like he was you know rejecting the checks; he was cashing them. So then yeah. he got mad later about something else. I don't know what it was, but they had a different. I have an yes. idea on that. Okay, my. My conspiracy theory on why he made a big stink. Yep. These boots were made for walking. Lee Hazelwood did, but Nancy Sinatra also did a cover of it. Okay. If you believe everything you hear about the Sinatra family and ties to this, that, and the other thing, was she upset she wasn't getting a cut or was cut into her versions of her song being heard? Because I figure you hear, you hear with Megadeth, they do a cover of These Boots Are Made for Walking. Man, I want to hear the original of that. So you figure the Nancy Sinatra version, version or the Lee Haywood version would be getting listens too because people want to hear it. Yes. So why yes. would so, you complain about that? But there, I, it's I, true. I, I blame Nancy Sinatra for it. Now, the the point that you're making is right on because I, I'm always suspicious of someone who changes their mind later. If he was mad from the very beginning, it would be authentic and an organic uh, reaction. Uh, yep. He was fine with it. The checks were coming in. He didn't care, whatever. Then he got all uh, angry about it. And that means that something else was involved. So sure enough, that was it. Now, Dave Ellison, the the bassist, he said when um, the, the album itself, uh, you know, this album displays unusual rhythms and unorthodox guitar riffs, which carried, quote, like a runaway train. The intensity of the record was so much. Ellison even said that the extreme speed was deemed the cool factor in thrash metal back in those days. Although Ellison considers the album as a solid debut release, he said that he wanted some of these songs to be recorded in a slower tempo. Uh, you know, that was his own personal opinion. If he was going to slow down, they would have been better songs. It was much, much too fast. So that's, I think, uh, very interesting. But if it was slowed down, they would have caved to the man and been radio friendly, and they didn't want that. Yep, and that's what have been. That's where I'm sure that Dave uh, Mustaine says, "No, I no, we're not doing that because we can't. We we have to do this. Is the market we're going after?" And any anyway, some of the reviews. Um, Colin Larkin, writing in the Encyclopedia of Popular Music, called the album a ferocious blast. Quote: A ferocious blast of high energy thrash metal, weakened by a thin production end quote you know so that's true they didn't have much money they did it themselves yeah. there wasn't much production value to it it was raw this album is very raw and that's what some people really like about it uh this guy says that you know uh that brought it down it was it was very good high energy but it lowers a few notches 
because of the production value. So, so here's the title, or here's the tracks. Last Rites slash Loved to Death, a four-minute song. It's kind of two parts in it. Song two is Killing is, is My Business and Business is Good. Song three is The Skull Beneath the Skin. Song four is These Boots. That's that cover song. The next song is Rattlehead. So that, and, and Rattlehead begins with, I mean, that that is where uh, Vic Rattlehead, their, their logo guy, comes from this, right? Is that before they had their little moniker? Of I, Vic I believe Rattlehead, so, yeah. Spun off from the song Rattlehead. Next song is Chosen Ones. Next song is Looking Down the Cross. Lyrics there deal with uh, Jesus' crucifixion from his standpoint. So, once again, uh, they may not have been religious. They certainly were not Satanists. Uh, they were writing uh, biblical songs there. And then the final song is Mechanics. That's that song, basically the four horsemen that everyone knows uh, today. Here's the personnel, Andy. Dave Mustaine, lead vocals. Guitar and piano. The very so first song he does the piano on that. Dave uh, David Ellison, bass. Chris Poland, guitar, and Gar Samuelson, drums. He's credited for playing the timpani on the song Rattlehead. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. I, I did some looking, and a lot of people had a good time, had a good laugh with that, saying that he's credited with the timpani because that's no such, uh, no truth to that. But I thought that was funny. If any listeners know the truth behind that story, uh, please leave a comment below, but that's what I read anyway. This was released June of 85. I was uh, myself just turned 15 years old. Uh, you know, it was considered the genre thrash metal. The record label is Combat, and the length is 31 minutes and 10 seconds. Very quick. I like that. For getting a debut album out, you don't want to go through and overdo it. But they had the budget of 8000 They put this thing together. And it, it did really well later on. When the Megadeth fans out there, um, they did not. The comments that I read when those various remixes came out and redoing it, the true Megadeth fans were not a fan. They said, no, I, they wanted the raw sound. They wanted, they didn't want it to be all produced. Yeah. And so they went ahead and cleaned it up and re-released it in, in 2002. Some people like the cleaner version. Um, some say the what I what I found to be true is before they polished it up, the bass was so high. They 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 pushed the bass high, Ellison's bass, and that really makes the song songs sound good. And I think that's what the true fans loved, all that bass work in there. And then they reproduced yep. it, got it all leveled off, and you kind of lose some of that. So I, I can agree with that. That's all I've got with with Dave Mustaine. I've owned maybe three records of them uh, in my collection. Not this first one. I had to go through and listen to the songs here again because uh, several of them I never heard ever in my life. So I'm not a true Megadeth fan, but I can see where the fans loved it. Mustaine uh, took took this as his way to get back at Metallica. Yeah. And so were the all the other albums. Uh, he started it with doing everything, everything himself. So this was a a tour de force, as you can say, yes. and very good. A lot of fans because he did everything I heard on his own. They did the cover song. They got in trouble with that. The cover, the actual cover of the album was done wrong. They got in trouble with the cover song. But for eight thousand dollars, they they partied and um, they got this thing out. And there was no thrash metal at the time. This was leading edge. This was breaking ground. So once again, back to the respect for Mustaine taking on all those roles and not being, you know, he wasn't getting a check for being all these, all these uh, roles. Uh, he just said, no, well, I'll do it myself, we just want the album to be successful. So yep. any other last thoughts on uh, killing? No, like no, it's, it's a good cool. album. Again, not one to listen to in the car. You kind of tend to go a little faster then. So let's do it at home. You will drive fast. As you're, work, as you're working out or something like that. Good for that, but not as you're driving. All right. And I like you, it. Do you have any other, uh, Music, music stuff, Andy. Do I ever? Okay, I like it. Steal a man's wallet and he'll be poor for a week. Teach him music and how to buy instruments and he'll be poor for his entire life. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. A couple of birthdays is a couple of days around here. 20th of June, the year 54. Michael Anthony, American bassist. 
who has worked for Van Halen and other acts. Michael Anthony Marks markets a line of hot sauces and related products named Mad Anthony. He has a number of custom-made bass guitars, including the famous Jack Daniels one he used one with Van Halen. I like so that. Happy That's birthday, Michael Anthony. June 21st, that'd be tomorrow. Here's an interesting fact. English blues, rock, and heavy metal singer Nicky Moore, who was best known as a member of the British band Sam Samson, was re he replaced Bruce Dickinson, who left that band to join a band called Iron Maiden in 1982. Did not know that. So there you go. So Samson, we got to look them up in his uh, future. Oh, that sounds interesting. Uh, the, the heavy metal band. Dickinson called left that Samson. band. Yeah. Love it. So he was the original, uh, okay. Yeah, Bruce Dickinson yes. left that band to go join Iron Maiden. I like it. June 21st, 2001, John Lee Hooker, American blues singer and guitarist, dies in his sleep at age 83. He had hits with Boom Boom, Dimples, and I Am In The Mood. I don't know what he's in the mood for, they don't say. Um, his songs have been covered by many artists, including Cream, ACDC, ZZ Top, Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix, Van Morrison, the Yardbirds, The Doors, and The White Stripes. He appeared and sang in the 1980 movie The Blues Brothers. John Lee Hooker was a great guitarist. Yeah, Speaking so of The Blues that. Brothers, it was this week in 1980 it was released. So kind of funny how that all turned out. Concerts, Shirts and Skins, here's some of their dates. Um, tomorrow's show in Glencoe Days has been canceled because of flooding. So a lot of these outdoor town things, outdoor – events um check your calendars check our social media their social media i know the bowl and shock we had to cancel their patio stuff a couple days this week because of the rain so before you go please check your social medias and the band's sites if not the other ours. thing that i've been seeing uh as another way to mention the follow social media because sometimes the flooding is canceling the shows and sometimes the people getting there uh, because roads are closed and bridges are closed, that it's not convenient to get to the location. Regardless of the concert themselves is fine. They're still canceling shows like that. And and because people can't get to them, uh, people can get there by going around about. But the majority of the people that are going to come aren't going to show. So they just say, hey, let's cancel. Now, there's also more rain expected and coming. So yep. keep watching your social media feeds. Yeah, I noticed on social media today, the uh... – Sheriff of Scott County, what's his name? Anyway, he put on social media how the bridge in Shockby or in Chaska there is closed. So the sheriff of uh, Scott County, I'm not sorry, Chaska, Scott County Sheriff, he put out how the roads go. So follow the county line uh, social medias, these facilities, their social medias to check uh road. Yeah, Chaska countries. is in Carver County. The bridge that's closed is in Carver County, but the publication announcement came from the sheriff of Scott County. So, yes, watch for those things as well. Junk FM uh, playing tonight at in Viola, Minnesota. They're playing tomorrow, Treasure Island, the next day, St. Clair Days. So, again, check your uh, maps on how to get to these places with uh, roads. Viola. Are you oh, ready, a soapbox. Okay, a music soapbox. Well, this is, and this is just, I'm kind of, I'm not even defending the guy or the, the place. The Eagles are playing at the Severe in Vegas. Great, whatever. A whole month for the, you're telling me there's a month's worth of dates in Vegas to see these people at this facility? Who hasn't seen – it's like Kiss's farewell tour. The Eagles just keep going on and on and on. And for some odd reason, they're going to make a boatload of money playing here for a month. How Who many dates minds? How many dates in that month are they actually playing? Not every night, right? But but, but still, you, you've you blocked up the place for a month to be there. You know they're putting them up for the whole month somewhere in Vegas to stay. Oh, I just can't even imagine. I, um, I, I like the Eagles. Don't get me wrong, but I have a tough time believing they're that good. Well, I imagine the workers there and the staff that's dealing with all this is going to be so sick of – not Eagles, just whoever. If you're playing for a month at that location, yeah, it's going to get old real fast after one week is my projection. They haven't done anything relevant in, even before their 
Hell Freezes Over tour. They, I just don't get how these bands can put these strings together. It's corporations buying tickets, giving them away, radio stations giving away. Local radio station here in Minnesota giving away tickets to this. No. But here's tickets to go see the Eagles. Great. Now I got to fly there and stay there and eat there and take time off from work and everything else. Well, it's this I'll whole, wait they're closer, thanks. Yeah, the sphere thing is is the new hot item. And so yeah. everyone's going to go there in part just to see that or experience that. Is, is, boy, that, I didn't know that a month. That is. I saw the Eagles like about 20 years ago on their first their first Hell Freezes Over reunion tour. That was all right. They still had a little bit of it then. I've said it once. I'll say it again. Yeah, that's a good soapbox. I don't think I'd watch it if they were in my backyard. Yeah, that's a good soapbox. That's very, that's fair enough. And I'm sure other music acts are looking at this, rolling their eyes as well. Like if the Eagles were coming here somewhere nearby and I won tickets or got a deal on them, I'd go. Yeah, I just, you know, we're here. not we're not ripping on the Eagles here. We're ripping on a one yeah. month show concert booked. For any band, yeah. I could not even imagine. Yeah. And some homework. Okay. Got my notepad here ready to go. Ooh, Justin Timberlake got pulled over for DWI, and there's every stupid meme in the brother and that and their brothers out there. But here's the homework. Find me a musician or an artist or an athlete who hasn't done something stupid in their life. Timberlake finally got caught for DWI. Not saying he's a raging alcoholic about time he got caught. He wasn't in line for sainthood either. You know, so he got busted for DWI. Big deal. Now, That's I the think... Word. Find me someone who's who can be perfect and, and, and would get criticized like this if they accidentally littered or he got a, a DWI. Was he 0.9? Was he 0.44? Who knows? Who cares? That's his own yeah. personal life. I don't part of, that. I think, the part of the, the the comedy where this all started, and I could be wrong, I haven't followed the story except for his response, was that he told the officer that he had one single martini. And so then I think people started gang piling, piling on yeah. um, because that leaked out. I only had one martini, you know, that it's, that's, that's wrong on just so many levels. <laughs> so it was your first martini ever, Mr. Timberlake? But I guess that, that's the assignment. Find me someone who, I don't care who they are, how popular, even Justin Timberlake, Justin Timberlake, whoever I thought, son rolls and sat on his ass. They're roasting him here because he got a DWI. whoop do doo that's what I got, man. Just like I said, watch our social media, um, the counties, the facilities are going to for the weather this weekend. Yeah, but, and, uh, and in Minnesota, it's not just around here. It's not just up north. It's central. It's west. It's south. It's northwest. It's northeast. It's Arrowhead. There's there's water problems everywhere, and it's impacting. Duluth is all flooded. They're good. Barely get Grandma's Marathon in this weekend, so you know. And some of these great, fantastic outdoor venues for music um, are getting, you know, hit either by the, the rain itself or the bridges and roads that are closed because of it, and people can't get to it, so it's not even worth yep. it to have it. So, yep. sad thing, but it is what it is. That's uh, it comes with the territory. That's all I've got here: Megadeth and concerts, up, up uh, shows, tours, new releases. Uh, look for us next week. Uh, Thursday night is the next show. Now have a good week, everyone. Bye.